So in other headline stories this hour, President Trump has rejected a plea from Italy to help in stabilizing war-torn Libya. During a news conference, the U.S. leader said there was no role for Washington there, and that came just moments after Italy's prime minister had highlighted how important America's participation would be. We need a stable and unified Libya. The U.S. role in this is critical. I do not see a role in Libya. I think the United States has right now enough roles. We're in a role everywhere, so I do not see that. Well, it appears that the Italian Prime Minister had good reason to expect U.S. assistance. President Trump's rejection stands at odds with recent actions. Earlier this month, he approved a military airstrike in Syria and also sent a warning message to North Korea. Taking up the story, Caleb Maupin. We are losing billions and billions of dollars. We cannot be the policemen of the world. When Donald Trump was running for president, he promised to do away with foreign interventions and put America first. I will never send our finest into battle unless necessary, and I mean absolutely necessary. My foreign policy will always put the interests of the American people and American security above all else. That will be the foundation of every single decision. But American interests seem pretty far-reaching. For example, they include Iran, which is over 10,000 kilometers away from Washington, D.C. Everywhere you look, if there's trouble in the region, you find Iran. Uh, so right now, what we're seeing is the nations in the region and others elsewhere uh, trying to checkmate Iran and the amount of uh, disruption, the amount of instability they can cause. And another thousand kilometers further, yet another foreign policy goal. Washington is promising swift action. Under President Trump, the shield stands guard and the sword stands ready. Donald Trump recently attacked Syria, violating international law because of unproven allegations about chemical weapons. If Russia didn't go in and back this animal, you wouldn't have a problem right now. He was going to be overthrown. Trump recently dropped the largest non-nuclear bomb in history on Afghanistan. He sent more troops to Somalia and he's escalated airstrikes in Yemen. Now his old critics among the war hawks love him. I am all in. Keep it up, Donald. I'm sure you're watching. Don't let these guys talk you out of being tough because you need to be tough. He, he has uh, flip-flopped on a whole series of uh, important policy positions. He's uh, called for increasing military spending by an astounding $54 billion. This would raise the U.S. expenditure on the military to an even higher level than it was at the height of the Cold War with the Soviet Union. If you look at his, his record, he was not nearly uh, as moderate as he uh, portrayed himself to be. For example, he claimed he opposed the Iraq War, but uh, the quote, from him at the time uh, showed, in fact, he was a, a big supporter of going to war. Donald Trump might have promised not to be the policeman of the world, but now, three months into his presidency, one has to wonder if he's going down the same path as his predecessors. Caleb Maupin, RT, Washington, D.C. Hundreds of people injured in a horrific attack on evacuation buses in Syria are now being treated in hospitals in government-held areas. And for one little girl, the relief is clear. What a smile that is. Well, buses filled with evacuees trying to escape areas besieged by rebels that they were attacked as they waited to leave. Among the more than 130 people who were slaughtered, 67 were children. Survivors say that children were lured out of the buses with snacks, leaving them more exposed just before the explosion ripped through the bus convoy. However, the tragedy drew little media attention, with some outlets calling the victims pro-government loyalists and simply blaming the war itself for the tragedy. While a CNN reporter chose to use the word hiccup in reference to the massacre. We have since heard that the evacuation process is continuing despite this, you would say, hiccup but disastrous uh, moment. Dozens of supporters of President Bashar al-Assad are the latest victims of Syria's brutal civil war. Both sides have been stuck in a no-man's land with a conflict of emotions. 
Well, when it comes to Syria, the media's focus instead seems to be solely on another tragic event, the alleged chemical attack in Idlib province earlier this month. Many Western outlets and officials rushed to blame the Syrian government for what happened, even though an investigation is still underway. Russia's foreign minister reacted, saying that Western countries are using the incident as a pretext to reintroduce the idea of regime change in the nation. I believe that it's a very serious situation because it's now obvious that false information about the use of chemical weapons by the Syrian government is being used to switch to the long-cherished idea of regime change. I think this organization, OPCW, is very close to being discredited. Well, Moscow is now pushing for a wider probe by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons into the alleged nerve gas attack. Pro-opposition sources reported that more than 70 people were killed. Russia and Iran suggest an additional investigation team be sent because they believe the organization cannot properly verify anything until it's actually visited the site. The OPCW has rejected the proposal. Nikki Aaron takes a closer look now at the international reaction to the attack and the chemical weapons watchdog's decision. Russia and Iran want to send a team to investigate the suspected chemical weapons attack in Idlib. But it looks like that's not going to happen because that proposal has been overwhelmingly rejected by the OPCW. Besides, many minds had already been made up about the attack. British scientists have analysed material from the site of the attack. They're very clear that sarin or a sarin-like substance was used. Uh, it's been clear that this was... A, either sarin or a sarin-like substance that was used in this gas attack at Kanchiku in 6.30 in the morning on April the 4th. Chemical weapons scientists at Porton Down in the United Kingdom have analysed samples obtained from Kanchiku and these have tested positive for the nerve agent sarin or a sarin-like substance. And the OPCW itself says there is undeniable evidence it was sarin, a colourless and odourless gas, excessive exposure to which can lead to paralysis, breathing failures and even death. And it only takes a small amount to cause nausea, excessive sweating and the contraction of pupils in victims' eyes. The conclusion was reached before an OPC team even got to the site of the attack. So the question is, is this investigation adequate? Russia thinks not. Not a single OPCW representative was there on the ground. Where, how and who took the samples? Who exactly at the OPCW was so quick to analyse the biological samples if standard OPCW procedures imply a long-term process of complex research? Moscow suggests that maybe the OPCW should consider some other pieces of evidence. It tried to provide photographs of victims which appear to show their pupils dilated, not contracted, which would raise doubts that sarin or a sarin-like substance was used. But that was rejected. Just like our U.S. counterparts, we were going to show some visual material. Unfortunately, the U.S. permanent representative at the OPCW began panicking and went into hysterics when he found out. As a result, we're going to display those photographs on the big screen. The photos show children with dilated pupils when a primary symptom of sarin exposure is contracted pupils. If this organization or this cold war and recrimination is actually uh, stopping Russia presenting new evidence, or stopping uh, the, the proposal of finding a team to investigate on the ground. It's actually undermining the credibility of the organization. The Syrian president denies launching any chemical attack. He says the country no longer has any such weapons, with the last declared stockpile having been shipped out of the country and destroyed in 2014. That was a deal that the OPCW chief even won a Nobel Peace Prize for. But who cares about that, when minds already seem to have been made up about that too? So wouldn't it be wise to wait for the OPCW to actually present some solid evidence? Syrian President Bashar al-Assad says that Western countries are stalling the investigation because the findings may derail their own political agenda. We formally sent a letter to the United Nations. We asked them to send a delegation to investigate what happened in Khan Shikun. Till this moment, they didn't send anyone because the West and the United States blocked any delegation from coming. 
because if they come, they will find out that all their narratives about what happened in Khan Shikun and then the attack on Shirat Airport was a false flag, was a lie. German prosecutors find a suspect and motive for last week's bomb attack on the Borussia Dortmund football team. More on that, we have live recap after a break.